God bless everybody today. It's January 27th of 2024. This video is going to look at potentially the timing of the six seal event as we move into what I think is a destructive month of March and April especially. This April just looks horrendous right now. And so if you've been looking at my parable, the fig tree, and my paradigm, you'll realize that we're walking into a potential Antichrist resurrection, rising of an Antichrist, and a signing of a seven-year treaty by April 20th of 2024, which is Hitler's birthday, which I have basically 1260 days to the Feast of Trumpets of October 2nd of 2027 on my charts. And I'm going to show you these charts and how I've adjusted them in this small gap of time in the next three months so that I can clarify and try to give you the best possible optic on what's coming up. And it all revolves around Psalm 9010 and the parable of the fig tree. Now look, I know I've tried to take the parable of the fig tree chart and meld it with the paradigm chart. And that chart is still out there. And I've broken out the parable of the fig tree again and tried to make a timeline through the next 1,344 days. But I'm going to specifically look at the next three months as we move forward into the signing of the treaty with the nations, potentially on April 20th. But we have a potential six seal event on uh, or April 8th due to we have a fourth total eclipse happening on that very specific date that is and these eclipses have occurred in the last seven years okay so they started in 2017 they moved to 2024 the last one is on April 8th of 2024 which is potentially a high watch date for a six seal event so let's go into all this and let's try to unpack this and see um, how this all works so if you go to my free wix site on endofdaysurvival.com and you come down to these pdfs i've left the paradigm chart here so that we can compare it to the uh, psalm 90 10 parable of the frig tree chart I've always said that the Psalm 9010 strong generation, 80th year of the nation of Israel, all things would happen prior to May 14th of 2028, and I stand by that today. Okay, that hasn't changed. I still stand by a lot of the elements in the paradigm, and we could see a lot of those elements play out. Now, they could be compressed. Maybe my dates aren't exact. But there's a lot of elements that are playing out similar to what's happening on the paradigms. So we need to keep all that just open-mindedness to potentials of what could happen. And God is not going to leave you in the dark. He's going to clarify this picture in the next few months so you know what's coming. You probably could just see it coming because you know enough about what's going on out here that you would just see it happening in the front of your eyes. and if you have the seal of God, you should recognize what's happening. If you aren't seeing this, then I question where you are with God and, and whether or not you truly have a seal of God on your head and maybe you ought to work on your relationship with Jesus and, the, and God himself so that you can get to a better understanding because to me and the people that I talk to around me mostly it's very illogical how this is playing out and that we can basically map this out and revelation is there for a reason it's a revelation to you to understand what's coming to the end he does not want you in the dark okay he wants you to understand but he's not going to just give the information out nilly-willy free you know, even I have to work at this. He gives me insight. He directs me. And then I have to do a lot of research. And I have to go in and go, okay, 
you gave me this insight what do I do with it and how does it connect with all the other things that I've been working on and how does it deal with these charts that I'm working with and can I make them can I meld these two charts together to give you guys and myself and all the people that I deal with out here a proper timeline of truth and you know the charts are going to morph and change because we see clarity as we move forward it's like a film that you're developing a picture that you've taken you put it in developing fluid and over time it clarifies it's the same process this happens to me all the time it happens to me on my charts it happens to me and you know just understanding and he'll give you insight if he just gave you the answers you'd just write it down and you'd forget about it until it got there and say well, okay now I gotta worry about it but that's not how this works he wants you in the Bible he wants you to get down into his word and actually start to break it out not just have people spoon feed and parrot this stuff to you look you're gonna realize on my channel it's unlike any other channel out here in general I have my own views and my points of views and you may or may or you may agree or disagree with those points of views I'm giving you the best analysis that I possibly can under the circumstances that we're under which is very tight right now as you go into April which I think is going to be a bad month a really bad month and I'm going to do another economic video here soon because there's something going on on March 11th the, when the Fed closes that borrowing window to the banks and starts to shut off their spigot you're going to see a massive fall out of the banks as you walk into April and into that second quarter okay so just realize that the economic collapse is getting ready to happen and you're in a third seal event getting ready to happen so if you don't understand what's going on out here and you don't understand that when those bonds reinvert and normalize the fed controls that two-year bond but they can't control the long end of that bond curve and it's going to go up and you're going to see it stabilize probably two to three times higher than they want it to be before this is done and it's going to cause all kinds of problems but let's look at this chart that i just added now i have removed this other chart that was here and i've added the new chart here because I want it's more pertinent now and it gives you better clarity and it also works with the paradigm chart so when you click on this Psalm 9010 chart which basically takes you into the parable of the fig tree it gives you that chart and then I add elements that are necessary to understand what's coming up in the next uh, 1344 days to the Feast of Trumpets of October 2nd of 2027 which is when I believe rapture is going to happen in my opinion so when you click on this it takes you to this chart so when you go to this chart what I've done is I've removed some specific paradigm pieces that I can't um, verify at this point that's why I've left the paradigm chart up so I can we can all go back review that chart and then look at this chart because this chart's more important because it deals with the parable of the fig tree and the strong generation of the Jews and how Daniel 8 and 12 give us these specific date sets of days that we need to be watching specifically the 1260 days the 1290 days the 1335 days and the 2300 days now just recently I did a video about how we saw the continual burnt offering stopped on April 5th of 2023 so to me this is extremely important and one of the most important pieces of information that I found out here to give us an indication on where we are in time and no one's talking about it okay this happened two weeks ago when I brought this up I found this article about how the continual burnt offerings and daily sacrifices had been stopped on April 5th of 2023 and that put us into the Daniel 1290 days 
also the 1335 days and the 2300 days of Daniel in 8 and 12 chapters. Okay, so that's extremely important that we look at. The he tells us in Daniel 8 and 12 that when they stop the continual burnt offerings, there's a number of days that we should be concerned about, 1290 and 1335 days. So if we know this specific date, then we should be able to map it out on the chart. So I did. I took April 5th of 2023 and I projected it 1290 days and 1335 days forward. Okay. And then when you go into the chart, I'll try to bring this up so you can see it. Let's bring it up into the chart so you can see it. I've got these lines so you can see where they come up to so that you can easily look at the chart, see what's going on. So when you come in here and you look at this, you realize, okay, so if the 1290 days ends here, that's October 16th of 2026. Okay, end of the 1290 days, the sacrifices and continual burn offerings, this is 1290 days after they were stopped. The 1335 days takes you into November 30th of 26, which is interesting because I show that we have abomination of desolation on December 5th. So that would make a lot of sense that we would have potentially a problem here where everything would start to break down and we would be in the 1260 days of tribulation prior to abomination and then on Hanukkah of December 5th of 2026 we would see basically abomination of desolation which makes a lot of sense now the one thing that I brought to your attention the last time and you may or may not agree with this but it was the only way I could make it work in the chart and after I started to look into this and I realized that I believe that we've been getting this completely wrong that I believe Antichrist is only given 1260 days of power okay sorry about this guys I'm trying to get to the right place and if that is the case then he gets power between the signing of the treaty of the seven-year treaty, which happens on April 20th of 2024 to the Feast of Trumpets of October 2nd of 2027, that's 1260 days, and he's done. I cannot find anywhere out there that says that he gets power for seven years. And I've fought that seven-year timeline for so long because there's so many places that tell us in John and other scriptures that he shortens the second half of tribulation or the elect won't survive. And you can see I have a shortened second half here. 1260 days, you've got a 959 day first half to abomination from the signing of the treaty to abomination and then you have a shortened second half which takes you to the Feast of Trumpets on October 2nd of 27 and the return of the Lord during the rapture and these are the people that make it through great tribulation to this time because if you're dead you don't rise until the white throne <coughs> um, judgment and the signing of your name in the book of life in Revelation 20 you don't get the millennial if you think you do and you don't get to the seven trumpet you're not going to see the thousand years, in my opinion. I've explained why this is, because the book of Revelation is chronological. If you go to 15, 1 and 2, Revelation, you'll realize that you're having a seventh trumpet sound. You see the sea of sea and glass, and then he hands out seven bowls for the wicked, okay? But you don't see the rising of all these other people until Revelation 20. Or later the people that are raised in Revelation 15 1 and 2 are from great tribulation it specifically indicates that so that's why I marked it this way it's the rapture of the elect saints and martyrs from great tribulation as it indicates in Revelation 15 chapter 15 
So let's go to what's going on now, because this is what's going to affect us today. So I'm going to put this on the chart first, and then I'm going to take you a text file so it's easier to understand how this flows, okay, because it's hard to look at the chart. But the chart basically says the same thing. I'm going to walk through some elements here that are extremely important to understand how we got here, and then I'm going to take you into the next few months of what I think is coming. So if you go in here and you blow this up just a little, and we can actually see this a little easier because I know it's extremely small print. We had a, f a couple additional elements that I've added to this chart is that we had four eclipses between 2017 and we have one coming up on April um, 8th of 2024. So we'll see four full eclipses, total eclipses between August of 2017 and April of 2024, which is a seven year gap, which is extremely important. So as I'm showing you this, I want you to ha see these elements and why they're so important. So I added them to this chart because I want to clarify and make this chart more usable for us without a lot of this paradigm stuff added into it. Because the paradigm may be wrong. It seems like a lot of the elements are playing out. So I don't think it's completely wrong. And we seem to be in the gap of time that we are now. And it's actually happening that okay maybe i'm off a little but it doesn't seem to be off too far so those elements are still in here as we move forward i'm going to show you that but another thing that i realize is we have an extremely important muslim date coming up in april that's going to affect everything as we move forward and it's extremely important that we understand that this is a Muslim Jewish Christian thing and we need to watch all these different elements and how specific dates and holidays affect us. Also, we need to watch the seasons and times and the moon and the sun and all the things that he, need, that he tells us that we should be aware of to determine where we are in time. So I'm constantly bringing all these different elements up to you so you can see them and try to give you the best perspective as possible. Now, am I right all the time? No. Nobody is out here. Look, if you think you have it figured out, I sure don't. You see it changing a little bit occasionally here because it's being more clarified all the time. But to say I have all the answers? No. I'm. You know what? I would be a fool to think I have all the answers. Actually, the more I learn, the dumber I get out here because it's amazing how it runs through everything it's amazing how the bible has laid this all out through the prophets and we can actually understand it two thousand years later it's still working okay did the prophets know what was going on when they were on the ground exactly no it said clearly that daniel did not completely understand the vision and he was supposed to seal it up until the end times that that then it would probably be revealed to us through a chapter and book called revelation interesting how he's done all that to lay this out for us but let's look at this chart so we've had four solar eclipses that mattered so i had originally done this video three years ago and i reposted it just recently in the last few in the last day because it's pertinent to today a lot of the info look that a lot of the information I'm providing for you in the last six seven years on my videos out here hasn't really changed the narrative's the same Erdogan's a white horseman he's going to form ten nations they're going to go against Israel in the process you have a Daniel 8 effect and you're going to see Jerusalem under judgment in, under stream duress between October of 23 and especially april of 24 and it's going to move forward into 27 but you're going to see these massive ramps up the ramp up of all these events 
I had done this video three years ago, reposted it, so it's an older video. You can see it. I always date stamp my videos so you can see when they occurred. And I talked about how these total eclipses would affect the United States. It would create an A over this country, and it would potentially be causing anarchy in this country. Three other things that we should be concerned about is you have a potential X over Oregon here. You have an X over actually Little Egypt in Illinois. And you have another X here that is in San Antonio, Texas, which is, well, the Alamo of all places. And what's really interesting these all occurred in the last seven years. You had one in 2017, you had one in 2023, and you're going to have one on April 8th of 2024, which is coming up through Mexico and crossing over both of these additional eclipses that happened in the past and heading into Canada, okay? So does X mark the spot on these two locations? You do have a Madrid or a, a, a fault line, earthquake fault line right here in Illinois that would impact this whole area here and me. <laughs> Just saying, I'm in, I'm in this impact zone. I don't know who might be in this impact zone and you potentially have another impact zone up here. That one's already occurred though. So I don't know if anything happened in Oregon in between the time this passed and this passed and this X occurred. But this one's getting ready to occur on, on April 8th, which causes me a lot of angst because on my timeline that could potentially be a six seal event. And on that blood moon event, that last one of 2020, what we saw was something extremely important, I believe. We saw the last blood moon on the day that the election was ratified and Joe Biden was elected president of the United States here in the, in the United States. This was the very day that Wisconsin certified Joe Biden as the winner of this election and that sent us into this situation that we're in right now and why we have Joe Biden here. Because this is ordained by God. You do realize that when nations fail, God gives terrible leaders to these nations before destruction happens. And so Joe Biden was certified in on a day and a Ted Trad blood moon event that happened in 2020. Um, if you took that last blood moon and am actually amplified it like 0.1, it would have been a full blood moon and it would have been a tetrad. But I saw that and realized that we had a full tetrad literally sort of happening in 2020 and that's why I did the videos and that's why I knew when I did the video around July 4th that when we got to November 30th we would see something stupid happen like Joe Biden would get certified as the President of the United States and we would get stuck with a terrible leader as we move forward into this this storm that we're getting ready to move into so let's get back into this chart and what we're going to do is i'm going to take you to a text file that will go through basically the beginning of um, this first uh, eclipse in 2017 to the signing of the treaty of april 20th and so i can lay it out and you can actually see how this all plays out and it makes more sense okay so what I've done is I've laid all these elements out on a table here so you can see them. It's just a text file. I want you to be able to actually read this stuff and see what's coming. So this is extremely important. I'll probably bring you back to the paradigm chart just so we can follow it as we move through this. So, so we had that first eclipse on August 21st of 2017. This is one of four eclipses as we move forward into April 8th of 2024 okay we're getting ready to get there here in the next few months so we're moving through this quickly at this point what's really interesting is on october 6th of 2019 
The Trump administration ordered American troops to withdraw from northeastern Syria, where the United States had been supporting the Kurdish allies, and then we abandoned them through Trump's administration. So see, I'm not political in a lot of ways. They all are bad leaders in a lot of ways. In this case, Trump's probably the best leader we have as we move forward because he brings strength to this nation, is, and that's what the world needs to see right now. The military, op and you may agree or disagree with that, the military uh, operation began on October 9th of 2019. You saw that on my chart. I talk about how Erdogan uh, is unleashed on 2000, uh, October 9th of 2019. Uh, the Turkish Air Force launched airstrikes on border towns. The conflict um, resulted in displacement of over 300,000 people and has caused the death of more than 70 civilians in Syria and 20 civilians in Turkey. Now, this has ramped up a lot, okay, since then. So, these are old numbers. Just realize this is constantly happening since 2000. It's been happening for decades, but it's, it really broke out in 2019 on October 9th because he unleashes this operation down here. So we have these uh, human rights violations. So Erdogan has no ability to talk about, you know, the Hamas and how they're being uh, destroyed by Israel when he's basically doing the same thing to both the Armenians and the Kurds. It's just ridiculous. So um, this uh, turned into an operation on October 19th, 2019 on Yom Kippur. It was my birthday. We talked about that I don't know how many times. It just happens to be my birthday around Yom Kippur a lot. That we saw this invasion of Operation Peace Spring that went against the Kurds. Okay. It also went against the uh, Syrian National Army, the De uh, Syrian Democratic Forces, the Syrian Arab Army. All these things are starting to happen. And then this actually turns into an additional operation on November 20th of 2022, where Turkish Air Force launches Operation Claw Sword against the Kurds. Okay. And look how that's ramped up in the last year, year and a half. So we have the second additional eclipse on June 10th of 2021. So this is the second of four eclipses. Right after that, I indicate on my chart that on June 30th of 2021, we would see the start of the 2300 days. And if you go to that chart, I'll show you that real quick. So to give you perspective on the chart, the 2300 days, as I've indicated for some time, go from the Feast of Tabernacles when the sanctuary is cleansed at that point. God is with us because he's tabernacling with us. That goes from October 17th of two. 27 moves back 2300 days to June 30th okay and in that same breath you have an eclipse here an eclipse here okay so you can see where we are in the chart and then you have that invasion by Erdogan on October 9th of 2019 which I say is when they broke the first seal and we started this chain of events as we move forward. You also had the start of a Shemitah cycle in here, okay, right here on September 7th of 2021 which takes you into 2028 and the strong generation would end prior to that end of the Shemitah cycle in 2028 in September. So this is all extremely important that we look at all these different elements. So like I say, you've got the first solar eclipse. Trump pulls the uh, guys out on October 6th. Erdogan takes advantage of that immediately, starts to invade through Operation Peace Spring on October 9th. Um, you get into June 10th of 2021, you have the secondary eclipse that goes over the nation on that chart I showed you over our country, starts to build that big A, June 30th, um, and this one I think actually was up in Canada. That was that secondary eclipse up in Canada, if you remember the chart. If you go to June 30th of 21, that was started the 2300 days. I just showed you how that went from the Feast of Tabernacles to June 30th. We had that second solar eclipse right prior to that. 
when you get into September 7th of 2021, we start the sabbatical year and we also start that new Semita cycle between 21 and 28. Okay, and that would fall on September of 28. You also have in between that at the beginning of 28, the end of the strong generation on May 14th of 28. And so that would fall within the seven year Shemitah cycle. Otherwise, you're starting a new Shemitah cycle. And that's where people would say, well, we got another seven years then. Okay, which I don't think we have. And after 28, do you really think we're going to get to 30, you know, 2035? Probably not. So he started this new operation on November 20th of 2022, where the Turkish Air Force launched Operation Claw Sword against the Kurds. And that's been continuing since. They've launched multiple different attacks against them and we've had bombings in Istanbul and you've had Koran burnings in Sweden and now Joe Biden has decided in the last day or so that he's going to give a whole bunch of F-16s to Turkey so he can continue the carnage. That was a really nice gift from Joe Biden to Turkey and Erdogan to appease him because that's what Joe Biden does. He appeases everybody. Look what he's done with Iran. He's appeased Iran until they get a nuclear weapon. Uh, Kerry was part of that. And John Kerry's now the, well, John Kerry was the environmental czar that's going to all these globalization type meetings on his Lear jets and everything which is amazing his footprints got to be amazingly huge but he's telling us how we need to watch our little puny footprints ourselves as he's polluting the world and and creating globalization type uh, methods everywhere is ridiculous and I'm sorry I don't mean to get off on these rants but um, John Kerry now has gone to Joe Biden's administration and he's going to try to get Joe uh, re-elected so uh, they've moved him in his position why you would want Kerry on that watch I don't know because Kerry did terrible in his election so I wouldn't think that would do them a whole lot of benefit but that's just my opinion when you get into spring of 23 on my chart you start that destruction of Israel Okay, you get into October 7th, you actually start to see him get attacked. Okay, so he always attacks with locusts, famines, plagues, economic collapse. You're talking Joel 1 here. But look at this. We got into April 5th, and I talked about how I did that video about the daily sacrifices being stopped by this rabbi and how this was going to be a real problem and... This was extremely important to the biblical community because this told us when the start of the 1290 days and 1335 days of Daniel 11, verse 11 and 12 actually occur. This is extremely important and no one's talking about it. And then look what happens. A few months later, six or seven, eight months later, we see that attack by Hamas into Israel. On my paradigm, I had indicated October 9th of 2023 that we would see Israel, because of that vision of Daniel, in Daniel 10, and he has that 21-day sickness, and then he sees Michael come against Iran. I showed you how I broke that down from Gregorian into Hebrew calendar dates and it ended up here wow two days from the time Hamas attacked they had to regroup and Israel goes in and says you know what we've had enough of this and look at what they've done since that war hasn't slowed down at all no one's talking about well, they're trying to talk about getting releases and stuff but nobody's really interested in a lot of that at this point and I don't think Hamas is willing to give up their their human shields Without, a, you know, basically Israel stopping the war completely and, and that's just not going to happen. So look at this. On October 14th of 2023, you had that third solar eclipse. 
So now you've had the continual burn offering stopped on this chart. You start into the 1290 days and the 1335 days, which takes you forward. You get into October 9th here. We saw that attack right prior to that on October 7th. You have the third eclipse of that total eclipse on October 14th here which I believe then starts your Ezekiel 39 or 38 and 39 formation against Israel because everybody's uniting against Israel. Even Iran's being friendly with Turkey at this very moment. And I had talked about how if you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, it talks about Persia being one of the first listed. I didn't know if they were absorbed first through Daniel 8, which is not the case at this point. Daniel 8 is going to happen after Antichrist is on the ground. He will take Iran out, but that's not going to happen immediately. But you're now watching all these ten nations form against Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Then, on January 15th, we had additional events occur here. And I think this was extremely important because on my paradigm, I originally had indicated that we would see something happen on January 15th. I didn't know what. I thought maybe it was an invasion. And then we'd see a six seal on January 30th. But now that I see this eclipse out there on April 8th, the last of four, and makes an A over this country, which doesn't necessarily affect the Middle East, but does affect us, and we potentially would see a six seal event on April 8th, this might matter to us as we move forward. So what happened on January 15th on that date that I brought to our attention called 10 Tibet? that was in the history books. I brought this to your attention. It's still on my chart. On January 15th of 2024, look at all that happened here. Iran carries out a series of aerial and drone strikes within Iran, Iraq and Syria, claiming that it targeted regional headquarters of the Israeli intelligence agency Mossad and several strongholds of terrorist groups in response to the Kerman bombings on January 3rd, for which the Islamic State took responsibility. I took these right out of articles, okay? That's why you got highlights here, because I'm not making the stuff up. I'm giving you reports from the news that came out on these dates. On January 15th of 2024, not only did Iran come in here and take responsibility to a certain degree because they went in and did literal strikes and they said, yeah, we did it. Turkey comes in and also does his own strikes. Turkish President Erdogan vowed on Tuesday, on January 15th, that he would widen the military operation against the Kurdish-linked militaries neighboring Iraq and Syria days after an attack on a Turkish base in Iraq killed tur nine Turkish soldiers, which I believe happened on January 1st. Then look what happens. Turkish warplanes and drones have been carrying out airstrikes on targets in Syria and Iraq believed to be affiliated with the banned Kurdish party PKK since attackers attempted to infiltrate a military base in northern Iraq, semi autonomous Kurdish regions on Friday. Five soldiers died in the attack while four others died in critical injury. And then look what happens. In a televised address following in a cabinet meeting, Erdogan said Turkish jets had struck a total of 114 targets in Syria and Iraq in Operation Launch in the last five days. And I put videos about this out there. All these things are documented videos so that you can keep track of all this stuff. Okay, it's extremely important that you understand how this is all playing out in front of your eyes. On January 26th, the United States government had privately warned Iran and ISIS that they were preparing to carry out terrorist attacks ahead of a coordinated suicide bombing that killed nearly 100 people in the southeastern city of Kerman. And this is extremely important right now. Because this is why this is lighting up in the Middle East right now because of this attack on Kerman. So this is becoming more and more of a problem as we move forward here and we get into these 
dates of March and April that are coming up that show you some really interesting things that are happening on the ground and up in the, you know, everything's going on here, guys. You just need to understand there's so many parts and pieces that are working together here that it just can't be random events happening and there's a higher power controlling all this. So as we move forward into the next few months, we have some extremely important events coming up. And we have some extremely important things happening in signs that we need to be watching. So you had that attack on January 26th in Kerman. That's going to amplify everything. That was in the last uh, day. I keep talking about how we get into these. We're past the 1,350 day mark now. Things are going to amplify as we head into the 1,300 day mark. It's just going to keep moving forward. Every day we get closer to the Feast of Trumpets, this is just going to amplify. March 10th of 2024, you have the holiest uh, month in the Muslim community. Um, it's their most holiest day, Ramadan begins, and look at the timing of it. It runs from March 10th to April 9th, which is interesting because the eclipse, a potentially a six seal event, would happen on April 8th. And that Ramadan is the holiest and most important month for the Muslims all over the world. Then look at what it says here. Muslims believe, I don't know much about the Muslim thing, but this is what it said in the article. Muslims believe that the gates of heaven are opened and the gates of hell are closed during this month. It is the time for them to get closer to God during the festival. Adult Muslims practice fasting during daylight hours. And I'm talking about a resurrectional event prior to April 20th. Okay, the signing of the treaty of between the nations. So you're talking about a six seal event potentially happening on April 8th as you move forward here and a resurrection on April 20th or a signing of the treaty on April 20th. So look at this as this moves forward here. So, you have Ramadan happening between March 10th and April 9th. You have the eclipse on April 8th. You have this holiest month. You have the gates of heaven open, the gates of hell closed on March 16th, Antichrist. And that's actually wrong. This would be Gog. I'm sorry. I will have to adjust that. That's actually Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39 because we haven't had an Antichrist resurrection, so that is a mistake there. Gog of Ezekiel. Now, it is right on the chart. So if you actually go out and look at the chart, I indicate that Erdogan or Gog and his armies um, are destroyed um, on the sixth seal event. For just on the same day of that solar eclipse. Okay, so that's extremely important. On this chart I have it since the Antichrist. It's not Antichrist because he's not resurrected because we haven't had a six seal event and a resurrectional event called the sixth trumpet happen yet. So that is a mistake on my part. And I always point these mistakes out because I don't want to confuse you. Okay, so you know what? I'm right here, so I'll just adjust it now. Erdogan Gog sieges Jerusalem for the first time on to Adair. Now, I've on the chart added a gap between March 16th and the 24th because if you look at how the chart set up, March 24th is when I show we would have a siege on Jerusalem based on my analysis. But I realize in time that on two Adair, which would happen on May 16th of 2024, this is when the original siege of Jerusalem happened the first time, and we saw Jerusalem fall in the past. So I'm only a week, eight days off here on this potential siege. 
and that if you see a siege um, basically on or a six seal event on April 8th that if you subtract that half an hour or that hour of power or 15 days prior to April 8th so if you go into April 8th here let me find it here you go you go to April 8th you have that fourth total eclipse you have basically a siege fifth or yeah 15 days prior to that which would be may or march 24th of uh, 2024 you have the spring equinox or the start of spring just prior to that this could actually happen on march 16th because it happened on the past on to adair so i'm trying to leave this open because I don't know exact dates exactly but if you go to March 24th that's 15 days prior to the 8th and so there's this portion between March 16th and April 8th which I believe we're going to see an attack on Israel and then a six seal event on April 8th as we see that fourth e total eclipse happening and what do you see during the six seal event you see the sun and the moon darkened okay and stars falling from the sky or from heaven onto these ten nations that are attacking Israel and then look what happens you have the end of Ramadan so if Erdogan would die on April 8th of 2024, they would bury him and then he would what? Possibly resurrect on April 10th or 11th during Ramadan. Okay. And then what would happen? You would see a resurrection event and a signing of a treaty by April 20th of 2024. Okay. So let's walk through this just a little bit. So you have Ramadan, which is the holiest month. It ends on April 11th or April 10th, two days after that April 8th six seal event. And I talked about how they'll bury this guy quickly. He's in his own country. God's raining fire down on this nation called Magog. And the leader of Gog will die in his own country. He will be buried within two days and then resurrected three days later probably looking like Jesus coming out of the hole but we know it's not because he tells us this first one's an antichrist he will bury these armies for seven months after this destructional event on 616 and you can actually go from Revelation 6 uh, 6 verse 12 through 17 and actually see all that you can also go to Ezekiel 38 and 39 because it talks about the uh, burial of uh, bodies for seven months in the uh, valley of Ham and Gog so the first seal horse rider would be destroyed on the sixth seal they burn these weapons for up to seven years and then what happens right after that sixth seal you have the seventh seal you is broken you have a half an hour of silence which is about seven and a half days on this planet 144,000 people are, are selected in revelation uh, 7 prior to the seven trumpets being hounded out you can see that in revelation 8 1 and 2 because it clearly says that the seventh seal is broken and half an hour about a half an hour of silence and then he hands out seven trumpets that that's a literal statement which is interesting because when you go into the seventh seal, you see that the four winds are being held back on the seventh seal to what? Be released on the sixth trumpet. But look at the timeline here. If you have a sixth seal event on April 8th of 24, a resurrection coming up into a potential signing of a treaty on April 20th on Hitler's birthday of 2024 when he signs this treaty with the nations, you would see a resurrectional event somewhere between April 8th and April 20th 
which is right in the middle of Ramadan, and that the gates of heaven are open and the gates of hell are closed, and that you would see literally a third of the planet decimated also in this period of time prior to a opening of a bottomless pit, scorpions coming out and stinging people for five months without the seal of God, and then a resurrection event prior to the signing of the treaty just before that, and the, the rising of Antichrist and the fall of prophet and the releasing of the four winds all at the same time. And then look at this. Right after April 20th, on April 22nd through the 30th, you have Passover. <laughs> I don't know how these things can line up so well and not have some validity here. But let's see how this plays out because I'm telling you between now and March or April 20th of 2024, we are in a big hole here and we need to get people woken up to under, and I don't mean woke up. I mean, woken up to the fact of where they are in time and how this is breaking down and how the churches are going to basically be decimated as the six seal breaks and the whole world breaks in front of them. And they think they're all going to be pre-raptured when all this is happening in front of them. I don't get it. And when are these churches finally going to look at their people and say, we, I got it wrong, man. I guess we're not pre-raptured. I guess Darby Schofield might have been wrong. And that we've been, since the 1800s, middle 1800s, with this terrible false doctrine, been teaching you falseness this whole time. And now I have to explain to you that I've been wrong. I'm not talking about me, the churches. With this pre-rapture garbage that they're putting out on you all, if you don't see that you're not in the seals right now and this is breaking tremendously in front of you and you have not put oil in your lamp, you haven't done anything and you're going to be pre-raptured prior to this, you're sadly mistaken in my opinion. And maybe this will make you leave my channel. I don't know. I'm just showing you the truth of what I found. Now, the paradigm does work with the parable of the fig tree, but the most important chart out here is the parable of the fig tree because it tells you what's coming up. So I've presented these charts on my website so that you can print them off. This one you can print off. It may be little. You may have to use a magnifying glass to see it. If you have an 11 by 17 printer, you probably can see it better. You have a road map. You know what's coming. I gave you all these dates and things for a reason because they've been given to me so that I can present this information to you. But it's clarifying over time. And as it develops in front of us, as a picture in fluid would, as you just took a picture and you see the finished product when it's done, it's not clear off the beginning. It takes time to clarify these things. I had talked about how when I did the 117 step chart, how I understood and saw the top of it, but it took time for the bottom of that chart to manifest in front of me so I could present it to you. It's not an overnight sensation. And even the prophets didn't completely understand when they were given the visions what they were supposed to understand. They just knew they were supposed to write it down, present it to the population, and over time they retrained themselves to understand what was coming and they presented a proper piece of information so that it would end up in the Bible. I can only guarantee they only revised and revised and rewrote and rewrote and did what was necessary to make sure that when they looked at the other prophets, they were all on the same page. It's the same thing that's happening now. You know how many people are out here talking about April right now and destruction that's coming upon us? And when you see that Fed window shut on these banks and they have to pay these loans back on March 11th, 
which is another video I'm getting ready to do on how this lending loan window is going to close on March 11th. And that's going to send the banks into a nightmare because they have no liquidity in the bank and no collateral to pay these loans back that they borrowed all these bonds from the government and they now have to be recalled and paid back after March 11th which is going to send regional banks into a complete destructive mode because they're going to be liquidating everything to try to stay alive. And then what are they going to do? They're going to bring a crypto system in to reset the balance sheet because the B system's getting ready to come in here on April 20th, okay? What, you don't think the elites understand what's going on out here? You know, we're laymen out here trying to figure this out, but I'll guarantee you they have the smartest, brightest minds up there trying to figure this out, and they got a better handle on it than probably we do. It's not conspiracy. It's the truth. The banks are not your friends. They're evil. Now, I don't wish harm against them. They're going to collapse in their own time. But you need to understand that when you take these loans out and you put a fifty, a hundred thousand dollar vehicle on your debt list, you own a car, a house, all these toys and stuff, you've indebted and enslaved yourself to this nightmare. And you do realize that Satan controls this planet until the Lord takes back that deed which he's doing right now he's breaking seals right now he's recovering his property okay but it takes some time down here for this to happen but he's going to do it by the feast of trumpets and he's going to eliminate all the old uh, wicked people at the end here so you need to understand what is happening in front of you why this is so important that you take the next few months which is interesting you got till April 8th, maybe now, until that six seal pops, and you have a signing on the 20th that we're here. Okay, so this gives you a couple months to put more oil in your lamp, which is really nice that you know that you have some time still, but you're running out of time quickly. This window is going to close on you. Erdogan is going to get these F-16s. He's going to enter this war and it's going to change the whole Middle East because he has extreme firepower. They have one of the largest drone factories on the planet. He's been prepping for this for 25 years. Figure it out, people. I'm showing you the information you need to know to protect your families. But it's not just physical preparation. It's not just mental preparation. It is spiritual preparation too. You need to get right with Jesus. You need to understand that he's the true son of God. God that if you do not believe in the Son you will not make it to either the millennial or the eternity because he will blot your name out of this book I pray for all of you to do the things that are necessary to protect your families Please like and share these videos with your friends and neighbors if you find that there's value in this content. I'm not getting the message out because they're blocking me on so many levels because they don't want this information out here because they want you stupid and dumb. If you go look at the media out here and you look at the stations, all they're saying is it's beautiful weather and how it's going to be a gorgeous 24 when you're watching the world collapse around you and the Red Sea is exploding and it's causing hyperinflation all over the place. And I just did this video today about how the economy is collapsing due to oils rising and we're watching massive debt being placed down upon us. 
it's a non-fixable situation and they know it and they know this too okay they're not stupid and someday they're going to shut us off so you can't get the proper information because we're going to know too much and they're going to ban us out here so if you aren't figuring this out if you aren't printing these charts out you better figure it out god bless and have a great night